It has to be more than just historically interesting. There has to be some contemporary relevance, some vibrancy in the present with work from the past. The thing that I learned really at the get-go from winning grant was to get the idea out of my head that I was making art. It just wasn't about that for him, and then it wasn't about that for, for me. And so um, there was a kind of liberation, a kind of freedom to just use the medium as a way to respond to the world around me, to try to understand it and see it clearly. There was this confluence of my own innocence. And it's not to say that there was an American innocence at that time, hardly. There was a certain, still an innocence, I think, about photography. Um, it was still more charmed. When I look back at the work, um, it's really from an era that's, um, that's distinct um, in terms of its um, time period before things became um, more commodified, um, and partly through di digital, but partly through just the nature of capitalism in the United States. I was 21 and a student of Gary Winogrand in New York City in art school. And after spending a semester making not very good pictures in black and white and looking at a lot of student pictures in black and white that weren't very good, I proposed to Gary Winogrand, well, why doesn't the class transition to shooting color film? And well, why not? The world is in color, it made sense to me. I hadn't really looked at a lot of color photography, I just knew somehow intuitively it was time for a change. Photography at that moment, 1972, 73, um, color was still taboo in art school. At the same time, Bill Eggleston was already well into uh, making the work that became William Eggleston's guide. There was plenty of interesting color photography in the history of photography. It's just that it wasn't very published um, and not really ordained in certain traditional circles. Early on, I was shooting Kodachrome, which was a beautiful material, um, very rich, velvety, sharp. It was a slow speed, 25 ASA. So you had to kind of work within the constraints of the film, limited lighting conditions. Uh, but after two years, Kodak uh, decided to change the emulsion of the film and they made it more contrasty. Um, and more difficult to manage when you're just out in the world taking pictures and you don't have control over the lighting um, at hand. That's when I turned back and started to shoot in black and white and it was sort of in this period of bouncing back and forth, weathering the frustrations of color, the limits of the material, um, and just wanting to be out in the world photographing. Um, and black and white wasn't challenging technically in the way that the color was. I certainly had a sensitivity to trying to bring the viewer in, but I was a little bit more stepped back in time as the work you know, developed into the 70s. I started to work with a medium format and camera. But with a Leica, with a hand camera, um, there was something thrilling about being in this challenged place of um, being within and then trying to articulate uh, and to draw out a picture from um, being on the, you know, on the threshold of chaos, but at the same time, um, photographically being able to define some order. Mm -hmm. 